Hello and welcome back to Professional Tutors, the British Online School. We are a unique team of qualified and dedicated teachers here to help our students to reach their full potential. Right, so today we're going to discuss about balanced and unbalanced forces. Um, just a quick recap, um, a force is, is a push or a pull or a twist. Uh, if you look at this uh, starter here, what two pieces of information can we get from force arrows? So a force arrow will represent the direction of the force and the magnitude of the force as well. Uh, magnitude means how big or small a force is. So for this one, um, a force arrow will give us um, the direction of the force and also um, the size of the force. If you look at this, um, another starter activity here, on this cyclist here, uh, there are a few forces acting on the cyclist. We've got uh, 20 newtons. Now, if you don't know, uh, we measure forces in newtons, and that is going to be a one mark question in the exam. So we measure forces in newtons. So 20 newtons backwards um, due to air resistance, uh, 60 newtons forward, that's a thrust, and 10 newtons uh, backwards, and that is due to the friction. Now, the way we find the resultant force, we add all the forces which are pointing in one direction. Like we're gonna add 20 and 10 together. And then we take away from uh, the force in the other direction. So backward forces, 20 plus 10, 30 Newtons. And forward force is 60 Newtons. So the resultant force is going to be 60 which is forward force take a backward force. So 60 Newtons forward and 30 Newtons backward, you take away and you will get 30 Newtons. And the direction is going to be forwards because the forward force is greater than the backward forces. So what information do we get? Cyclist is speeding up or accelerating or what he's doing? So now because the forward force is greater than the sum of backward forces, so we can say um, the cyclist is speeding up. And if, if any object is speeding up, um, we say that object is accelerating. So accelerating uh, is the same as saying the object is uh, speeding up. And if uh, the object is slowing down, then we normally say the object is decelerating. So accelerating, speeding up, decelerating or deceleration, slowing down. Now have a look at this uh, scenario here. Uh, now could you explain why he is not moving? So a simple way or a smart way of um, writing uh, the answer in the exam. Uh, if the object is not moving, then you simply write that the forces are balanced. So you write this sentence, forces are balanced and you will get full marks. So in exam, if they haven't given you any numbers, if they don't want you to do any calculations, simply, uh, simply write that uh, the object is not moving because forces are balanced. Well, that's quite an interesting question here. So the car is not moving. That means there is no thrust from the engine. There's no forward force. Uh, there's no air resistance. There is no um, friction. Uh, so there's no forward force. There's no backward force. Uh, that's why the car is not moving forwards or backwards. But there's always a force. Always a force acts on an object and that's the weight of the object. So weight of the object always um, act downwards. So weight is a type of force because we measure force in Newtons and we also measure for, uh, weight in Newtons as well. 
because the units of force and the weight are the same, that means they are same quantities. So weight is a type of force. So on any object, the weight of the object always act downwards. Now, if there's only one force acting downwards, then why this object is not moving downwards? Because there must be another force which is pushing it upwards. And that's the, that's the force from the ground or the surface. So again, remember this, from the surface, or in this case, the ground, the upward force is called the reaction force. Now they're not gonna give you these two types of forces in exam, they expect you to know them. So again, on any object, um, the weight of the object uh, acts downwards and the reaction force acts upwards. And the reason this object is not moving is because the upward force uh, and the downward force, they are balanced. So upward force is the reaction force, downward force is the weight of the object. And both of these forces are balanced and that's the reason uh, that the, the object is not moving. So even if the object is not moving, even if the object is stationary, there will always be at least two, force in, two forces acting on the, that object. One is the weight of the object and second is the reaction force from the surface. So in this example, we've got a book um, on, on a table and the book is not moving. So always remember that the weight, uh, the downward force is always going to be the weight of the object, which will always act downwards. And the upward force is going to be the force because of the surface pushing the object upwards. And that force is always going to be the reaction force. So in exam, always keep these two types of forces in mind. They're not going to give you those forces in exam. They expect you to know them already. So always in any scenario, the downward force is going to be the weight of the object and the upward force is going to be the reaction force. Now, um, as we can see, the length of the arrows is the same. That means the forces are the same. If one arrow is small and one arrow is large, that means the forces are not balanced. In this case, uh, the direction, um, not the direction, the length of the arrows is the same. That means the forces are equal. For example, if this is 10 newtons, that is 10 newtons as well. So forces are balanced. And also the direction of the arrows is both of them, they're pointing in opposite direction. That means they, both the forces, they will cancel each other out. So we say that forces are balanced. Why? Because the arrows are the same length or the same size and they're pointing in opposite direction. That's why the forces are balanced and the object is not moving. If you look at this question here, uh, we've got three different pictures here. So in which of the pictures are the forces balanced? So we need to uh, tell whether it's, it's the, the left, right or the middle picture. And we also have to explain why um, that the answer, what we said is the answer. So we have to give the reason for our choice. The forces are balanced in the second picture because the arrows are faced in the opposite way and they're the same length. That's fine, well done, correct answer. In the middle picture, uh, because the arrows are of same size, that means the magnitude is the same and they are also in opposite direction. That means they're going to cancel each other out. So that means the forces are balanced. So if you look at this scenario, what is a cyclist doing? 
the forces are balanced because they are um, of equal, the arrows are of equal length and they are in opposite direction. So that means forces are balanced. That's the first thing. And when the forces are balanced, the object is set to be in equilibrium. So the object is in equilibrium when the forces are balanced. Now, if the forces are balanced, does that mean the cycl cyclist is stationary? Now, that is one of the most common mistake uh, done by the students in the exam, uh, or that's a bit confusing for the students. Now, you have to look at this. There are two possibilities. So if the object is in equilibrium or forces are balanced, it doesn't mean that the object um, is stationary. There will be two options. If the forces are balanced, the object could be stationary. That is what um, all the students normally write in the exam. They forget the second option. The, the object might be moving at a constant speed in the same direction. So whenever the forces are balanced, you have to look at the question, read the question properly and answer accordingly. So if the forces are balanced, um, if the object is in equilibrium, there will be two possible answers. The object will either stationary or it will move at a constant speed in the same direction. You have to look at what values will be given to you in exam and based upon that, we'll either write uh, the object is stationary or it's moving at a constant speed uh, and in the same direction. Again, we'll look at some of the questions on these in the coming slides. So the question is, are these forces balanced? The answer is no, because as you can see, the, even though the, the arrows are pointing in opposite directions, the size of the arrows are different. The bigger force is a force from the pedals because it's a bigger arrow, and the friction is a smaller force because it's a smaller, ammo, uh, smaller arrow. So this would mean that the cyclist is speeding up because the force from the pedals is bigger than the force of friction. Well done. So yes, so... In this case, the resultant force is forwards, forward, so that means uh, the cyclist will move forward and it will speed up. So that is what happens uh, when the forces are not balanced. So that means when the forces are unbalanced, uh, the object that is not moving will start to move because of the resultant force and the object that is already moving changes speed or direction. So whenever there is a resultant force, the object will either change the speed or it will change the direction. Sometimes it does change the shape as well. But in this scenario, whenever forces are unbalanced, that means whenever there is a resultant force, the object will either change speed or it will change direction. Right, so in this slide, we are going to look at a few options here. So look at uh, which force is bigger. You've got the forward force and the backward force. Uh, what is car doing? Uh, which force is bigger in this case? And what is the car doing in this scenario? So you can uh, so is there going to be a question? Are you going to say the question or do I just... Uh... So for the first one, the bigger force is going to be the driving force because the arrow of the driving force is bigger than the arrow of the resistive force. This would mean that the speed of the car increases or you could say that the car is accelerating. So for the second one, the bigger force is... The only force is the resistive force. So that the uh, this would mean that the car is... Uh, slowing down or you could say that it's decelerating. Yeah, well done. So always um, mention the direction of the arrows and the length of the arrows in your answer. And you can always say 
uh, the resultant force is forwards in this case and the resultant force is backwards in this case. So it's all about using those keywords, the forward force, the backward force, um, the upward force, the downward force, uh, the resultant force, um, speed increases or acceleration, uh, speed the object slow down or it will decelerate. So always use keywords while you are answering the questions. That's the most important, most important thing. In this question, we're going to look at, we got these um, A, B, C, D, and E. Uh, five different questions here. Uh, we're going to look at are the forces in these images are balanced or they're unbalanced. Um, if, if unbalanced, what will happen to the object? Uh, will the object move forwards or backwards or will the object move upwards or downwards or whatever way it is? Um, and again, we're going to look at uh, this fill in the blank um, activity here. Forces are balanced when they are uh, fill in the blank and when, um, so again, there's one more word that's going to come here. So you can pause the screen, do it, and then we'll come back to the answers in a minute. So for the first one here, uh, the forces are unbalanced and the car will slow down or move backwards. So that's the, that's, these are two possible answers here. Now, because the uh, size of the arrows are different and the backward force is greater than the forward force, so that means forces are unbalanced and the car will either slow down or it will move backwards. In this scenario, the size of the arrows are equal, but they're acting in opposite direction. So that means the forces are balanced and the object is stationary. So forces are balanced in, in B. If you look at this one, the size of the arrows um, are equal and um, they are acting in opposite direction. So forces are balanced. So forces are balanced in, in, that, in this case. But the better explanation for this is because the forces are balanced and the person or the object is moving with a constant speed. So if someone is doing skydiving, they're not going to remain stationary. They will move down with a constant speed when the forces are balanced. So the better explanation for this answer the arrows are equal and they're acting in opposite direction. That means the forces are balanced, but the object is moving downwards with, or the person or the skydiver is moving downwards with a constant speed. In this case, this arrow belongs to boy because he's pulling uh, towards, his and, um, towards him. And this arrow belongs to the girl. So girl uh, is, applying smaller force, the, the boy is applying uh, the bigger force. The forces are unbalanced. Um, so forces are unbalanced and the hands will accelerate towards the boy because he is applying a bigger force. The fill in the blank exercise, so forces are balanced when they are equal and opposite. So when they are equal and opposite. So in this question it asks us in terms of balance and unbalanced forces explain why first the helicopter hovers and then second the rocket rises. So the helicopter hovers because the forces are balanced. Uh, in a test you wouldn't really expect them to ask you why uh, like what the forces are called so the easiest way to explain it is to say that the forces are balanced and for the second one you would say that the rocket moves up because the upward thrust force is bigger than the downwards force gravity and air resistance well john so yeah so you were right uh, because when uh, when the forces they've got tricky names then they'll direct you in the question itself that you don't need to name those forces so the easiest way to get the full marks is simply write whether the forces are balanced or unbalanced. 
So a helicopter hovers because the forces are balanced. And in this case, forces are unbalanced. So that's another way they're gonna ask the questions uh, where they are going to give you uh, the values with the arrows. And they will ask you to find or calculate the resultant force and also describe what will happen to the object. So in this, uh, in this question, they're going to ask, um, they're asking us what will happen to this car and they've given us those values. The way you're going to approach um, the question, the way you're going to answer the question, uh, you need to calculate the resultant force and make sure you write this word in exam, the resultant force. And that's the biggest force, take away the smallest force. It's 40 Newtons. Many students, they forget to, to give the direction of the resultant force. In this case, the direction is towards the right-hand side. And again, you have uh, to explain what will happen to the car. It will speed up or it will accelerate because the forward force is bigger than the backward force or the resultant force of 40 Newtons is acting uh, towards the right hand side. So that is how you're going to answer the question in exam. Thanks for watching. If you find the information useful, please subscribe, share and like the video.